Welcome back to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing thermal design. In last lecture, we saw the electrical equivalent circuit which can be used for um, choice of uh, heat sinks when uh, we can use the steady state response. Now, this lecture let us look into the transient response. Now, this graph shows when the power dissipation is, is in the form of pulses and uh, the frequency of uh, these pulses is small enough that this time period T is much large as compared to the time constant of the of the junction to case material or let us say the temperature was over here initially before this uh, power dissipation pulse came in. So, then what happens is that uh, the as this PD a power dissipation takes place this uh, temperature the junction temperature increases and uh, it reaches to another temperature. Let us give it uh, some name let us say this is your uh, uh, T j 2 and uh, this is T j 1. So, it increases to this temperature of T j 2 and then after that this time period T p of the um, pulse this period gets over and again there is no dissipation taking place. So, the temperature tends to reduce now it falls down and it goes back to the original temperature of uh, T j 1 and further then when again this next uh, P d comes in then again this temperature increases and decreases in the usual manner. And as I just told you that this time period T of the pulse is uh, much larger than the time constant tau of the junction to case uh, the chip that is being used or whatever semiconductor device material that is there. In that case this is relevant that means as compared to uh, last lecture where we saw that that uh, your pulse density is very high or the frequency at which it is uh, taking place is very high. So, the junction then responds to the average that means it increases and decreases very small such that uh, we can say that it, it is almost like a steady state temperature and it is like an average junction temperature that is uh, uh, to average power dissipation to which the junction is responding. So, at that time this was not valid the time period of uh, uh, this entire uh, cycle this time period is was not small was not large as compared to the time constant of the junction to case area. So, then in that case what happens is that uh, this uh, steady state model is not valid we have uh, to take into account the transient response. And uh, so, in that case your simple thermal resistance R theta junction to case is not applicable. What instead is used is the thermal impedance or the transient thermal impedance. And this is denoted by Z theta which is written as multiplication of R T multiplied by R theta. Now, this R T, R T is a normalizing factor which is obtained from normalized z theta curves. 
Now here what uh, we see the problem is that that if this Tj2, this Tj2 is greater if uh, Tj2 this becomes greater than the maximum junction temperature that is written in the data sheet of the semiconductor device then uh, uh, your device may get damaged. So, now oh, what will happen is that the, de the device is now going to respond to the instantaneous temperatures or the peak temperature this is the peak temperature to, to that the device is going to respond and so is the average temperature the steady state uh, temperature that is not uh, uh, important. What is important are these instantaneously how the temperatures are rising or falling and whether it is reaching to a, at any point of time reaching to a value which is greater than the maximum junction temperature permissible for that device. So, uh, we have to use then the transient model and find out if this temperature to which it reaches is greater than the maximum junction temperature. So, then this is written as the temperature rise delta T that is written as equal to delta T hat 1 minus of E power minus T by tau. Now, this equation is similar to uh, the uh, transient equations that you have written for electrical circuits. Uh, okay, for your RC circuits how you have written um, your uh, transient equations this equation is also similar this is the peak temperature rise and uh, this is your tau is the time constant of the circuit where uh, this will be here it will be governed by your r theta the thermal resistance and the thermal capacitance c theta and t is the time for how much time it takes place and eventually everything if uh, the power dissipation is maintained in, a, in that case uh, it has to reach the steady state but if it does not happen uh, if uh, against the state changes then again we have to apply this equation and see that how much is the temperature. Now, uh, this delta T hat this is given by your P D into R theta. This is the uh, maximum temperature which eventually is going to be attained if P D is maintained means if you continuously keep apply P D then uh, in steady state what temperature rise that will take place that is delta T hat P D into R theta and as I already told you this time constant tau this is given as equal to R theta into C theta or we can also write it as thermal capacity which can be written as joules per Kelvin by your P D per Kelvin which is your watts per Kelvin. So, then what uh, uh, we will get your Z theta this is your uh, division of uh, delta T. Now, this is uh, let me write it as a function of time because this temperature the change in the temperature is a function of time here delta T as a function of time divided by P D that is the thermal impedance. So, this will be given as delta T hat 1 minus E power of minus T by tau by this can be then written as delta T hat by R theta. So, then this will becomes as equal to 1 minus E power minus T by tau into R theta. So, this normalized part that means your Z theta by R theta this normalization is your RT 
which is equal to your 1 minus e power of minus t by tau the time constant. Now what we see here is that this thermal impedance this is a function of time. So, it is going to vary with time and uh, uh, it depends on this uh, time constant tau that means your r theta into c theta multiplication and of course, we can normalize it by dividing it by the thermal resistance r theta. And uh, many times uh, instead of T uh, uh, people apply this uh, Tp that means uh, what is written as uh, your uh, Z theta for your let us say for Tp if the period of the pulse is then 1 minus e power of minus Tp by tau into R theta. That is because after Tp there is no dissipation that is going to take place. So, we will we are mostly interested in finding out what is the uh, temperature to which it is reaching finally, this Tj2 temperature is what we are most interested in and so that is why this Tp time is uh, uh, what we have to use to find out uh, what is the thermal impedance at this point to what temperatures is it rising. Now, this equation that is written over here this is assuming it is a homogeneous material and uh, it is a uniform heat flow that is happening the path of the flow of heat is very uniform and it is only at a single point where power dissipation is taking place. Now, that model uh, in practice does not work for most of the practical uh, devices components that we use that model is not uh, applicable the path is not uniform we may not be having a single point at which the power dissipation may be taking place the material may not be homogeneous and several other non idealities may be there. So, uh, then uh, this equation that is written over here cannot be used to find out the thermal impedance. So, instead what uh, is done by manufacturers is that they perform experiments, they measure temperatures uh, by giving uh, pulses uh, of uh, different durations and uh, then they uh, obtain curves and those curves are provided which can uh, be then used for a purpose where transient model is applicable and we have to use this uh, kind of transient equations so to find out how much is the rise in the temperature. So, this is the nature of uh, those graphs uh, which are provided by um, uh, manufacturers. So, here uh, uh, you can see that this one is the uh, thermal resist thermal uh, impedance normalized so that is uh, it is divided by the thermal resistance that means this is the curve of RTP and uh, over here uh, these are uh, uh, I mean the x axis is uh, the duration of the pulse TP. So, this is the duration of the pulse TP which is on the x axis and uh, then the uh, thermal impedance for different different values of TP that is uh, provided over here. Now, this first curve is for a single pulse. So, this one is for a single pulse and here more curves are given you can see this one and this and uh, these uh, other uh, four curves that are provided they are for nature of uh, pulses which are repetitive. This single pulse means that your pulse is uh, there and then uh, after that there is no pulse. So, that is your single pulse which is of duration T p. And here in this case uh, if we have repetitive pulses which where the pulse duration is T p and the time period or the frequency is uh, uh, decided by this period T and P d is the power dissipation that is taking place that means the height of this pulse. So, then uh, we can write the duty ratio uh, uh, which we can let us say denoted by delta which is your familiar duty ratio d is the notation which we have used earlier. So, that is your T p by T. So, if we know this 
duty ratio and uh, this Tp, then we will be also be able to find out this T. So, uh, with respect to different values of this duty ratio and Tp, these uh, plots are provided for the thermal impedances. So, from here whenever uh, we see that, uh, that the transient response is uh, going to be more uh, valid or important for a particular purpose the way the power dissipation is taking place. So, in that case uh, we can use these kind of graphs from there uh, you can find out the thermal impedance and there you, ca you can find out the how much is the power dissipation that is taking place and, uh, and you can find out the rise in the temperature. Okay. So, that is uh, this uh, single pulse that is uh, shown here this is the rise in the temperature and then after that the temperature just goes down and uh, uh, reaches to a particular value and this is the temperature which is very important that means instantaneously what temperatures it is attaining to is more important than the average temperature rise. Now, uh, power dissipation uh, always need not be in form of just pulse, single pulse or repetitive pulse. Uh, it, it may be having different uh, shapes in, in these kind of uh, different pulses of uh, various values of power dissipation. Here the power dissipation let us say here it is P1 and uh, that is let us say is for a uh, time uh, T1. Then up till time T2 the power dissipation level changes and it, uh, it, it has a value of P2 and then further let us say for uh, another uh, time up till T3 the power dissipation that takes place is P3. So, in that case how the temperatures will be changing first it reaches to this point and let us say the change in temperature is delta Tj1. Then further it reaches to another temperature level that is your delta Tj2. Two, uh, plus of course your this uh, uh, initial temperature which is your Tj0. Then at uh, point T3 it reaches to this level that is your delta Tj3 plus your Tj0 and then it finally uh, decreases. So, uh, there also the same equations so those are uh, transient uh, uh, thermal impedance graphs can be used to determine to what value the temperature has reached to. Now, always uh, it may be uh, it will be in the form of rectangular pulses that is not necessary. The power dissipation may be of uh, various uh, different uh, types of I mean the shape of that power dissipation you can plot uh, uh, what you obtain may be very different like for example, here it is shown here let us say the power dissipation is of this form it is taking place for this time period T and the peak is PP and then it uh, slowly reduces in, in this uh, nature. Now, uh, whatever equations uh, that we had written are, and uh, whatever graphs uh, that are given by manufacturers they are for rectangular pulses. So, then uh, how do we convert this non rectangular power dissipation to rectangular. So, for that what is done is that uh, we can find out an equivalent rectangular power dissipation PD where uh, usually they maintain this, this peak power which is your this PP and uh, what is done is that, that these two areas so this area and this area is equated such that this time period your uh, Tp uh, uh, gets is decided such that your Pp into Tp this will be equal to integration of uh, of the uh, of this uh, power dissipation curve Pdt from 0 to T. So, that is what uh, we observe here. This is your Pp the peak which is retained and uh, this uh, time period Tp has to be decided such that the area of these two are equal. So, that is how we can convert non rectangular 
power dissipation to rectangular power dissipation and uh, then use the graphs thermal transient thermal impedance graphs for uh, finding out how much is the rising temperature. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that your uh, pulsed power dissipation in that case depending on the frequency if the frequency is low then uh, the transient model is applicable and so temperature rise is uh, transient and uh, thermal impedance is used to there instead of thermal resistance and uh, uh, thermal impedance uh, uh, in, in that your uh, uh, it is the time constant which plays a very important role. Thank you.